I thought it would be helpful just to have a look at some examples of student work. All the work's anonymous and um, it's by no means perfect. It's just here to show you different ways that students structure their answers. Here's the question that I asked you to do, and thank you to all of those who've submitted it. You should have received an email with some feedback. If you haven't submitted your answer yet, please do send it over to me and I'll uh, mark that and give you feedback. So the question said, for a named city and a HIC, to what extent do the opportunities outweigh the challenges? And for this, you should be focusing on Sheffield. To begin with then, let's have a look at a couple of introductions. This first one says, Sheffield has developed a lot since the Industrial Revolution and has brought many opportunities and challenges to the city since. I believe the opportunities mostly outweigh the challenges. This student has very clearly said um, the extent to which they think the opportunities outweigh the challenges and they've used that, they've done that by inserting this word mostly. What they haven't done is kind of just outline where Sheffield is, which is what this example below does. So to answer this question, I'll be using Sheffield as my case study. Sheffield is a city in the north of England. I think that the challenges slightly outweigh the opportunities of development in Sheffield. So both good introductions in a way, but I think the bottom one's good a bit better just because it clearly says where Sheffield is. Now I'm going to have a look at a couple of paragraphs um, just as examples of different ways in which people have written and answered it. All of these are good in their own way. This first one is from a student's work and they have looked at an economic opportunity. And the economic opportunity they focused on is Sheffield University. Sheffield brings opportunities to lots of people of all ages in different ways. Sheffield has two main universities bringing not just education for people in the area but for over 5,000 students from 125 countries. This is giving new opportunities for these students and for the communities which welcome them. This means there are more opportunities for connections with other sister cities and countries for trading and jobs improving the Sheffield economy. So I like this answer because I think it uses the PEEG really well. They've clearly set out what their point is, that the universities are a positive opportunity. They've given an example where they've talked about students coming from all over the world. They've also said they've got two universities. They've expanded on their point and they've, they've tried to do that by talking about how um, the students arriving provide opportunities for the communities. And then they've linked that to wider geography and expanded on that point by saying those opportunities are about the links that Sheffield might form. I think this probably could be improved by being a bit more specific. So you could talk about the links that Sheffield maybe has with China. Obviously there's been a big influx of Chinese students in the city and it would be quite good to link that in and talk about the, the links that we have. And there's been a lot of investment coming into Sheffield from China as a result of the links that those universities have. But overall, it's a really strong um, answer. This next student looks at um, transport and they answer this slightly differently. This student has talked about transport being an opportunity and a challenge. I, I really like that. It's a very um, high level way of answering it. If we have a look at what this says, one opportunity in the city of Sheffield is that Sheffield has excellent transport links to other major cities like London and Manchester. This came with the development of a HS2 railway. However, this has many flaws. This could lead to Sheffield gradually becoming a commuter settlement if people find more attractive job prospects in bigger cities like London, which could harm Sheffield's economy. Furthermore, these transport links are very damaging to the environment because they release emissions that can contribute to an enhanced greenhouse effect and worsen global warming. So it's a good answer. It uses PEEG well. It considers the issues of transport. Slightly um, confused by this bit here. It says this came with the development of the HS2 railway. Just, obviously, HS2 hasn't been built yet, but I think you'd be better saying that the problems that HS2 might bring. But clearly the student's talking a lot of sense and, you know, they're really considering quite high level ideas. It's a really good geographical answer and, again, linking to wider ideas of geography within that answer as well. This next one looks at the challenge and it considers Meadow Hall as a challenge, um, which is good. And in really this paragraph focuses on the idea that when Meadow Hall was built, it had quite a big impact on Sheffield city centre. One challenge for Sheffield is the attraction of Meadow Hall, a shopping centre based in the northeast of Sheffield. It is home to around 280 shops and services with tram links and road links. Although at first glance this seems a positive for Sheffield, 
Due to its location, the shopping complex is an alternative to the city centre. Meadow Hall is approximately three miles away from the city centre, therefore making it difficult to visit both. This means that economic growth around the centre is difficult, as it's not as attractive compared to the 15,000 square foot shopping complex. Instead of following the Temple of Manchester, Arndale, a shopping centre within the city centre of Manchester, the shopping centre now brings less visitors to the city, therefore decreasing cultural exploration and economic growth, as well as making it very hard to develop the city centre. So this student's got a really good idea. I just think they miss out slightly by the way they articulate it. I think it starts off really well and then it tra trails off a bit towards the end. The point they're making here is saying that by Meadow Hall being built outside the city centre, it creates a lot of problems because of the fact that a lot of people will go to Meadow Hall rather than visit the city centre. Also, it might encourage people to get in their cars and drive further away. So you've got a chance there to link that to wider geography. You could talk about the impact it might have either on the city centre causing a spiral of decay where the city centre maybe the shops move out of the city centre and the city centre becomes worse or talking about the impact they might have on the environment but either way it's a really good answer it uses lots of different examples uh, and I like the way that they try to link it to Manchester but it just gets a little bit lost towards the end and then you're going to need a conclusion so here you've got two different conclusions so this says in conclusion I feel that opportunities outweigh the challenges it is a green city that provides futures for many people and challenges they have been worked on to change them. So there they've had a good, they've tried to sum up what they're saying. It gets a little bit lost towards the end in terms of them articulating their point, but they have made an effort to summarise that. They've said what they find, they're saying, I feel the opportunities do outweigh the challenges. And they've said what those are which is good, you know, that's all you need to do. This conclusion is slightly longer. So in conclusion, I believe that the challenges outweigh the opportunities in Sheffield because Sheffield is already a developed city. So it becomes harder to develop in a sustainable, environmentally friendly way that is accommodating for everyone. A significant, significant number of people have been left behind in previous development, which is part of the struggle Sheffield faces today. With resil with Resilience and careful planning for future development is possible, but difficult. So I believe the challenges outweigh the opportunities. I think what we're trying to look for really with a conclusion is somewhere between the two of those. So something that maybe is a little bit longer and a bit more detailed than that, but something maybe not quite as complex as this. So your conclusion really should just be looking at saying what you found and referencing back to the points that you have made to justify why you think it outweighs it or not. So overall, I've read some really good answers, very strong. If you haven't submitted your work yet, then maybe this might help in terms of providing some more guidance for you. I will put this PowerPoint on to show my homework so you can see that uh, and it might help you in terms of uh, understanding how you can improve your answer. I haven't included lots of work from everyone. Uh, I've just focused on a few students there, but there were loads of really good uh, examples of work that were submitted. And like I say, you should have got that individual feedback sent to you. So well done, keep up the good work, and I'll hopefully see you all soon.